All right, so uh, for today we're going to start with the uh, uh, editing some of the graphics elements of the project. Um, we're going to create the icon of the app as well as the splash screen. We don't need to do anything in Visual Studio for a little while. So actually I will exit Visual Studio and you could if you want but I need to because uh, we're going to use Photoshop and I'm using my recorder and all of that stuff takes up memory and resources and it slows my computer down. So um, you might want to exit uh, Visual Studio for a moment. And we're going to take a couple of notes because we're going to make these graphics. Uh, so quick show of hands, how many of you have any experience in Photoshop? More than half the class or so. Okay, very good. If not, that's okay. Uh, we're going to look at some of the fundamentals of Photoshop. This class, of course, will not replace taking our real classes, our IMCP classes, or the other classes where we talk about Photoshop. We're going to get a good crash course in, in Photoshop today. Before we get into Photoshop, we need to make some notes. Uh, so. Uh, let's go to your project folder. So I'm outside of Visual Studio. Go to your project folder. And inside your project folder, you've got your CBDB project. So go inside the CBDB project of your project folder. And inside of that, Remember, our graphics, our resources, are inside the res folder. The resources, the icon of the app, and the splash screen are here. There are some examples that already exist here that we will borrow their dimensions as our starting point for us to make our own icons. So inside of res, we'll start with icons, inside of icons. Uh, we're going to focus on Android, but of course, um, we've got iOS and Windows. And as I've said before, we're going to focus in the class with Android um, because we've got Android tablets, we've got a Windows computer. It's already set up to work with Android. Of course, our project will work on iOS and Windows devices if you further set them up, which we're not going to focus on very much because we don't have those set up at the moment. So inside of the Android folder, then I've got these three icon, uh, these four icons. Don't double click these. Um, if you just click on them one time, it should tell you down here the dimensions of the graphic. So I'm going to make a note here that there is an LDPI graphic that is 36 by 36 pixels. There's another one that's 48 squared, and then. 72 and 96. So I'm just going to make a note that I need to make graphics that are 40, uh, 36, 48, and 96 pixels. LDPI, MDPI, HDPI, and XHDPI. So low, low density, medium density, high density, and extra high density. And the point of this is that there's going to be these four different versions of the graphic that your device or the person's device will find the appropriate size and load them up on screen. So I'm making a note that my app icons are these sizes. I'm going to make the notes while I'm here to go check the sizes of splash screens for Android. So if you back up one level that takes you back to icons, you back up another level that takes you back to screens. So the icon is going to be the, the graphic that appears above the text of your app. And then the screens, the splash screen, is the graphic that appears before your app loads up. It's like a preview image before your app starts. And uh, we'll see how to work with that secondly. But while we're here, we go into the Android folder and we've got all of these. HDPI, LDPI, etc. Landscape and portrait. We set in the config XML file that our app is locked to portrait. So we don't have to bother with making graphics that are landscape because it's going to stay locked portrait. If you chose 
to leave the option in your config XML to be portrait or landscape, then you have to deal with making a graphic for the splash screen twice. One for portrait view and one for landscape view. I'm going to assume that you kept it portrait like mine. So I'm going to make the notes here again. Just click once uh, and select LDPI portrait. And it says down here that this is 320 by 426. So it's a vertical graphic. It's 320 pixels wide and 426 tall. And I'll do it for the MDPI medium portrait. 320, 470. HDPI is 480 by 640. And extra high is 720 by 960. So I'm making my, my notes that those are the graphics that I need to work with. Uh, I need to make graphics. And you see a little preview of it like that. Uh, there's a preview graphic that will show up that will give you something. And um, we weren't actually seeing that as you test your project. I never see that actually. Even though there are splash screens set up, I never see the splash screen when I test on a real device. That's because we also have to activate the splash screen feature, which is not on by, by default, which we'll do later. But I've made the note of the graphics that I need. So now, Go to your Start menu, and we're going to search for the app Photoshop. You want Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud 2018, not Adobe Photoshop Elements. Elements is like the little brother. We need the full power. So in your Start menu, search for Photoshop 2018. Now again, the other classes that we offer on this topic will be much more in-depth. And some general things that I'll talk about here um, basically is design graphics for the highest quality first. You want to design a graphic that's the big version first, and then from it we can make the smaller versions. Because in the world of graphics, if you start off with a little graphic like that and try to blow it up to be that size, it's going to look fuzzy, blurry, it's going to look terrible. It's going to look low quality, pixelated. So starting with a small graphic and then blowing it up is usually going to look terrible. The opposite, however, if you start with a large graphic and shrink it down, it'll look a lot better. And here, of course, I'm talking about raster graphics versus vector graphics, which I'll differentiate in a moment. Question. Your Photoshop needs a license. Does anyone else have that too? Is your is Photoshop asking you for a license key? I think that computer's got bad luck. You might want to jump behind you and grab that one. Is there like a give me thirty days or something? Yeah, it's in the drive drawer. Oh, okay. You sorry about that. That one's got bad luck. Um, I'll make a note of that and I'll check um, check your system, but try the one right behind you. So uh, I'll make some notes here. I'll make some notes here and put them into the network folder. These are general notes regarding graphics. Notes on graphics. Usually best to When dealing with graphics, usually best to start with the large version of your graphic first. If you start with a small one, so let's say it was the 36 by 36, and then try to resize or blow it up to 96 by 96, usually bad results. It gets pixelated. It loses quality. So 
So um, we made in the notes that we're going to need a, a 36 by 36 graphic. We're going to create a graphic in Photoshop in a moment, and I don't want to start with the smallest size. I want to start with the larger size. The opposite, starting with a large graphic first, so the 96 by 96, then shrinking down to 36 by 36 is usually OK. This holds for raster images, aka bitmaps. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, more in detail. So if I know from my notes I'm going to need one of 96 pixels, that's the, that's the one I should start off with. Um, so here in Photoshop, um, so I guess it says create new there or create new there. Or you can also go up to the file menu and go to file new. So wherever you see it here, in my case on the left, I see create new. OK, I'll click create new. You get then a variety of templates at the top. Photo templates, web templates, I guess we'll find what we want there somewhere, but just to have it in your notes right here. Um, but we want to do uh, preset details. Um, let's call this icon. This is going to be the icon for your app. And we're dealing with pixels, not inches. So the, this unit here, change it from inches to pixels. Uh, let's jump down here first. Resolution 72. I'll put these in the notes in the moment, but let's put 72 resolution here. So we're gonna we're gonna create an icon. It's gonna be based in pixels. Resolution 72, width and height. Well, like I just said a moment ago, we want to start with the larger size, 96 by 96, and that's what we need at the moment. But perhaps to kind of uh, future proof ourselves a little bit. Right now this is using LDPI, MDPI, HDPI, and XHDPI. Phones keep getting better and better. So if, if it's not out already, there's going to be an XX HDPI, an extra, extra high quality one. So it's going to be some larger size than that. Uh, so it might be better um, to start even even larger, like 128 by 128. And again, through the march of time, there might even be a larger version in all of that. So uh, what I'm actually going to say here is just to kind of really future-proof us. Let's do 512 by 512. So this is like four times or more larger than the largest size right now. And you know, we're thinking really far in the head, you know, one and a half years because this stuff changes so fast. So um, in the notes here, uh, start off with your icon of 512 by 512, 72 resolution, and in pixels, not inches. Be careful that that's still not set to inches, or you're going to get a huge like building-sized graphic. So in the notes in Photoshop, start with 512 by 512 pixels, resolution 72. And the, the value of resolution has to do uh, with quality, specifically like for printing. If I'm going to print something, usually I'm working with 300 DPI. DPI, those are the dots per inch. So when I print something out in the real world like this, uh, I need a certain amount of quality whereas I can get away with a lower quality in a graphics, uh, on a, you know, digital graphics. So 72 dpi here is, is just enough for us. So further here, um, OK, color mode, you can leave that as is. 8-bit, leave that as is. Background contents, white. So this is going to create a graphic. A little square graphic with uh, a plain white background, and then we're going to design our stuff on top of it. Well, what we actually want is a transparent background, because if you notice, most of the icons on most apps, they have transparency. 
like even from a distance you might see the the Google Play icon which is a you know a play button it's a triangle on its side and I see through the edges where the triangle is not I see through it to the background to see my wallpaper if I look at my app right here Opera which is an alternative web browser the O in Opera is transparent I can see through the O to the background of my wallpaper um, Therefore, here with a white background, you're going to have a weird white background. Even if you design a graphic, you know, a smiley face, everything's going to be white behind it and it might look weird. So we want here uh, transparent, which is right. Where did they put transparent? Background contents, white, black, background color, advanced. Um, hmm. Scroll down. Color, oh, there it is. Okay, my screen's getting cut off. Oh, okay. There you go. Transparent. Thank you. So, under background contents, transparent. I want no color behind the graphics. 72 resolution and background transparent. Besides all of that, the defaults are fine. Just confirm what I've got here. The name of the graphic, the width and the height in pixels, resolution 72 pixels, background transparent. Click Create. You get a square graphic with a checkerboard pattern. That's how it shows you that it's transparent. There's no way to show invisibility, so it's checkerboard. Uh, before we do anything, let's go to File, Save As. File, Save As to save this file onto our flash drive. Um, so this graphic, save it anywhere on your flash drive. Not necessarily inside of your project folder, however. Your project folder should only have your, your assets that are going to be used by the app. This Photoshop file we're creating is a work in progress file. It's not the final version of the graphic. So I'm going to save my work in progress file in my in my folder of this class or just on your flash drive and it wants to save as icon.psd this is Photoshop document it's a special document that lets you save the font that it's still editable your your transparency your your special effects and all of that eventually we have to save this file as the specific format PNG or ping but later, we will, we, will, we will convert our PSD file to a PNG file a little later. For the moment, just save this on your flash drive, icon.psd. Save as type Photoshop, and then click Save. You might get a pop-up about maximizing compatibility. Go ahead and just leave that on and click OK. This is for you to be able to open it in different versions of Photoshop. Now again, Photoshop is complex. Honestly, it's, it's difficult software because you can do so much with it. Photoshop's been around over 25 years now. So we've had 25 years of you know, putting, uh, putting cat heads on people's bodies. Uh, so Photoshop lets you uh, manipulate graphics, create graphics, edit graphics, and all of that. Uh, and for us, we can use it to make icons for our apps. So. Uh, you don't have to have uh, artistic ability uh, to make these icons, although it does help. And you saw from the examples of previous students that uh, you can kind of tell, well, those students over there might have gone through the IMCP program. They have a little bit more experience, and their icon looks perhaps a little bit more refined than this other one. And you're not going to be graded on the quality of your graphics. 
unless I guess they're really, really, really ugly. Uh, but um, I'm going to be grading you on that you can make graphics for your app, not that you make amazing graphics. Uh, so we have lots of ways to do this. One possible way to, to work here is with a plain old brush tool, but let's just all be on the same page here. Um, let's click on Window Menu and select Layers. From the Window Menu, Layers. Photoshop in most modern graphics software has this concept of layers, which are like different sheets of paper. So I can put one sheet of paper and have some design element, put another sheet of paper and put another design element, and they're separate. So what I put in one layer is separate from another layer. They can overlap and such, but they don't actually damage each other or affect each other. So you notice right here in my layers panel, it says I have layer one. So in layer one, I'm going to draw something. And again, uh, we'll do this in different ways. I'll show you like three or four different ways to make uh, graphics in Photoshop. Here's the simple one. On the left side, you have a bunch of icons to do a, a bunch of different tasks. And one of them is a little paintbrush. So if you click on the paintbrush icon, the brush tool. This is so fancy nowadays. You can uh, see a little preview of it. Wow. So I've been using Photoshop since like version 4, 1998 or something. And now it's like on version 17 or something. Anyway, uh, click on this brush tool here. Uh, and then you, you can click and you can draw with it. And you've got colors down here at the bottom. I'm currently painting with black. Uh, you can click that foreground color, and then you've got a bunch of other colors to choose from. Click a color, click OK, and then draw. If you make a mistake, you have Edit Undo or Control Z. And again, like let's say I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to make an icon for my app. This is going to be my CBDB icon. If I'm not scaring people away, this will be my, my icon for my, my app right here. Little guy in a top hat giving you a thumbs up. He's behind a podium, I guess. So, okay, this is one possible way to uh, make your icons here. You can use something like the brush tool. Um, I want to fill in colors. I've got a paint bucket which is hidden. Um, so this one's not going to be that serious. If you kind of have some ability with drawing, you could do it here. But even if you do have ability in drawing, it's really hard to draw with the mouse. This thing is so clunky. A mouse is nice for pointing on icons, but it's pretty bad for actually drawing. So. Instead, so I started to try to draw something in layer one. And uh, instead, uh, down at the bottom here, uh, next to the trash can, there's like a little paper, and it's create a new layer. Click on that one time. This is layer two. Next to layer two and layer one, there's an eyeball. This layer is visible, and this layer is visible. So if you draw anything on this layer, you will also see what's on layer 1. So if you click the eye, closes the eye, and then it hides the contents of that layer. It doesn't delete it, it's still there. And you see that I'm currently on layer 2 because that's highlighted. If I click on the other layer, it highlights right here. So hide layer layer one and then practice drawing a little bit on layer two and then I'll show you a couple of other more serious ways perhaps to make a graphic. So just play with the plain old drawing tool for a moment. Kind of get acclimated a little bit with Photoshop. Create a layer, hide a layer, undo, just Try, try it a little bit. 
And then I'll show you how to use shapes and gradations and filters and other interesting things. So using the brush tool um, is best with one of those digital pen tablets. Uh, there are various out on the market. A uh, popular one is from Wacom. It's this wireless pen that looks like a real pen. And then you have a special uh, tablet uh, connected to the computer. And then you use it just like a real pen in the real world. But it's digital, and whatever you do on the tablet then happens on screen and it's even pressure sensitive so if you press harder on the tablet it's got a thicker brush stroke on the screen a light touch will be a light touch on the screen they're very cool uh, the professionals use those because uh, this mouse is terrible even though that looks amazing it would have been better with the uh, brush tool uh, with a real Wacom pen tablet so okay this one's not too serious Brush tool is a possibility, but let me show you some other ways that we can create some some artwork for our icon. I'm going to hide layer two, create a new layer. Now these can be named uh, layer one, layer two. I'm going to lose track of what they're called, so you can double click on any of these and name it. You know, I don't know, red drawing. This is optional. You don't have to do this, but if you double click on the on the layers, you can name them. Spider Man comic. You know, you can name these these layers to keep track of them if you want but I've made a brand new layer layer 3 another way to uh, make icons is uh, via text art via finding an interesting font and using the font using maybe initials of the name of your app finding a font that has a very interesting letter J or something and then we'll also talk about other special effects, but let's try this way. On the left side, you've got this T for the text tool. <coughs> if you click the T for the text tool right there, click on that one time. At the top, you get a, you get a menu, a context-sensitive menu. Depending on the tool you clicked on, you get different menu options at the top. And one of them is up here for the text tool. 
these different fonts. So um, first, let's set a size here. Um, yeah, the size is 72 point at the maximum or other. Let's set our size here first. If you, if you see there's the name of the font, then over here there's a size 12 point. Click there, click other. I guess just to keep it super simple, click in the box here. Uh, and we'll type um, maybe like 200. And then press enter. So you have all of these built-in sizes, but because our graphic is already 512 pixels big, 72 is too small. So up here, just change that to 200. Press Enter. And then on the left, you'll see the built-in fonts. So there's all of these, like Matura MT Script. You may see that sort of text. So one possible way to design your graphic for your app is selecting an icon. Then you click one time, and then maybe put the initials. CB, DB, not so big. I need to move it. So your, your move tool, I'm trying to type it, but the text is off the edge. I have a move tool. I have a tool, the very first one, that I can use it to move any layer. So I'm trying to type, but it's going off the edge. C, B, D, B. I want to move it into place with the move tool. I can go back to the text tool to go back to edit it. So with the text tool, I type the text. The very first tool is the move tool. I can then move it into place. I have the ability to change the color of my text. And I've got some fun special effects I can add. Let's say I write some letters. This is my CVDV layer. I have here FX, effects. I can add some special effects to the text, like a drop shadow. This pops up a big complex window where I can play with all of these options about the, the size of the font, the color of the font, its opacity, I, I mean the special effect, the size of it, the angle of it, and everything. So down here, you can uh, turn on effects for that layer, and you have effects. You can stack them. You can do drop shadow plus an inner glow plus a stroke, and all of those have multiple effects. So try that for a moment to um, play with the text a little bit, maybe put in a special effect on a separate layer and see if you find anything interesting to, to use as a font for your app. Thank you. 
So using a, a font with some special effects might be a might be a way to um, uh, create an interesting icon. Now remember, think in terms of right now all of this square is going to be the size of my uh, of my icon. So if I had done this, if I had designed this amazing graphic as my icon for my App, well, the problem is it's going to be tiny because I've got all this empty space. That whole square represents eventually the size of your icon, like on that size. So, in my case, I didn't maximize the size of my graphic. Uh, so, be careful about that. So, uh, notice how I, I can zoom in and zoom out. On the keyboard, you can press Control minus to zoom out. Control plus to zoom in. This is not resizing your graphic. This is just zooming in and zooming out like a magnifying glass. So we've got a magnifying glass right here. I can use that magnifying glass to zoom in closer to see the exact details of my project. If you double click it, it goes back to a normal size. If you need to zoom in for a better view, you can do that. Control plus, control minus on the keyboard, or you can double click this zoom tool. It takes you back there. Now, um, you saw that what I did was I, I resized my text very quickly. Uh, we have a way to do that here. Um, I'm on this text layer. And I can click Edit, Free Transform, which is also Control T. Free Transform, Control T. That'll let me resize a layer quickly. So if I drew something on a layer and it's too big or too small, I can select its layer and then Edit Menu, Free Transform, or just memorize Control T. And then what you get are these edges that then you can pull out to make it larger, or smaller, or taller, or, or whatever. Then you have to click the check mark on the top right over there to confirm your changes. Uh, I'm going to hide 
that layer and create another layer to show you something else. So a couple of ways here were with the plain old brush tool, which does require some skill. Then we've got a way to do it with text, with fonts, which could be interesting. Let me continue with fonts, <laughs> with fonts, but then also adding special effects. Because this, uh, this text, I manually added effects. There's a bunch of built-in effects uh, that I can use to quickly create something interesting that then I can, I can tweak. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'll get the text tool again. Maybe choose a different font, maybe some sort of thick font. I'm going to go with black oak. And I'll write again CVDB. I'm just going to write um, text again to show you another trick. <laughs> so I've got some text. Uh, it's got a color. I've got the layer selected. And then if you go up to the window menu and select styles, in the top window styles, we have a variety of built in special effects that have already been sort of brewed up for us. You'll see them right here in a new panel styles. What you can do then is click on one of these styles and it'll automatically add these effects. Some of them might be better than others. But we have more than the ones listed here. We have these default built-in ones and you can get more styles right over here. You see, I've got your styles panel. And next to it, you've got this uh, more options button. Clicking there, you have these other styles abstract styles, glass buttons, photographic effects. Uh, I'll click on abstract styles. And it pops up, would you like to replace the current styles or append or add to the current styles? Just click OK to replace the current styles. And you get a few more here. So you can click on that little icon on the corner of styles and switch over to maybe like photographic effects. And you click OK, get some effects over here. glass buttons but whenever you select any of these styles if you look on the layers that's just a variety of effects that have been put together in a specific way so if you select a specific style and you like it as a starting point you can go in and, and manipulate each individual um, aspect of the style. You can double click any of those to edit them more. So for example, if I go to abstract style and I select this first one, let's say I like the starting point, well then I can uh, double click on bevel and emboss <coughs> and um, I get the pop-up that says okay bevel and emboss have these options and I can further go in and make changes like the angle of it all, get that effect a sort of contour, you get that effect. So you can start off with one of these built-in styles and then go in and further double-click an effect to change it how you wish. So under 
KS styles, I can do that. It looks like nuclear radiation or something. So that'll look great for my icon. Really catch people's attention. Or maybe one of these icy ones. My app is so cool, its icon is frozen. So take a moment to play with some of those styles. Some of those built-in styles. And uh, then we'll do shapes. And we'll see what we come up with. Just play with those styles for a little bit and then we'll go. Okay, we'll do one more, then we'll take a break. Um, I'm going to hide this layer and create a new one. Now, another way to um, create icons, if I don't have artistic ability, is to use shapes. Uh, so you see down here, we've got a plain old square shape. If you put your mouse on that, it gives you the preview that tells you that's the rectangle tool that draws simple rectangles. Okay, well, most of the tools in Photoshop are multi-tools in, in that they can do more than one thing. And you see that because there's a little triangle in the corner. This tool can let you do more than what it's at face value and as well as the rectangle that we're about to use. And the way you access that is by clicking and holding. If you click and hold the rectangle tool, it pops up. Would you like to make rectangles? rounded rectangles, ellipses, which are circles, polygons, lines, or the one we want is custom shape. So right below this black arrow, which is officially the uh, path selection tool, right below it there's a rectangle. It's a rectangle shape. Click and hold the rectangle and then select custom shape. Looks like a little splat. So you selected custom shape, then at the top it changes, the, the menu changes to have various properties. And one of the properties is right here, the, the, actual, the actual shape, right here. Right now, the shape of this custom shape is an arrow. So if I click and drag, it makes an arrow. Okay, I'm going to undo that. Instead, uh, if you click, it pops up there to show you some built-in shapes. There's like an envelope, some flowers and stuff, starbursts, lightning. Oh look, it's the it's the Harry Potter lightning. Right there. So you click and you drag, you select the uh, you select the custom shape, then you drag to draw it. And that also can be a different color. Up where you've got fill, you have different colors. And so I drew there a light bulb shape. When you draw these shapes, you might accidentally make them too tall or, or too thin. So as you're drawing them, you can hold down Shift on the keyboard, and it'll keep it in proportion. 
because right here it's a little too wide. The proportion is weird. As, you, as you're drawing it, you can hold Shift, and it'll keep it in proportion. So there's some uh, built-in shapes here. There's even more built-in shapes when you click on this little gear. And you can say, show me animal shapes, film shapes, music shapes. If I select animals and click OK, I get a few animal shapes. So maybe one of these shapes plus some text plus an effect. And really, the best thing to do here is just select all. Instead of trying to jump from, from one to the other at a time, just go to all, and then all like 200 shapes or whatever it is will all show up at once. And you can pull this panel out by the corner and see more. So I find a shape, I double click it, and then I click and drag to use it. And yes, when you, when you make a shape, you can then apply a style. So if I've got one of those shapes and then apply this style here, I'm building on top of the basic pieces of shapes plus styles. Then I can add text. Right below I put CBDB. And I've got the graphic. take our first break. If you haven't been doing it, remember to save. Hit Control S once in a while, or go to File Menu, Save. And we'll take our first break. Um, obviously, if you've never used Photoshop before, this is a whole big world to explore. You're not going to be graded on, really, the quality of your graphic. You're going to be graded on making a graphic. After the break, uh, well, we need, to, we need to add this graphic to our project. I'll show you how after the break. Uh, but for the moment, we'll take a 10-minute break. You can play around with making some kind of graphic, and we can use it in our project. Uh, maybe just you don't have the a great idea or inspiration at the moment. That's OK. You'll be able to change it later on as the course goes on. But I just want to show you a little bit of using Photoshop to think about making a graphic. This is the icon of your app. Right after the break, I'll show you how to add it to your app. So we'll, it's 7.30. We'll be back at 7.40, and then we'll go on.
All right, everyone, let's go on. Again, you don't have to have a, a finished uh, masterpiece at the moment. You'll have time later, but we want to have something to work with so that we can put it into our project. <laughs> 